Prime Minister of the uh, Benin, the uh, Minister, the Ambassadors, the ABS ladies and gentlemen, is a, a great honor for us and for the Ministry of Economy and Finance to uh, host this breakfast this morning. And I, I want to uh, warmly welcome the Prime Minister of the State uh, of this island. In Bercy. You met uh, yesterday the Prime Minister with President Macron at the Elysee Palace and you both officially opened the France Israel cross season at uh, the Grand Palais. And I know that the talks were productive and open, and this friendship, as you know, means a lot of us between France and uh, Israel. Last se September, my first trip outside of Europe as a Minister of Finance was to his home. And this choice was intentional. I did not only want to be a firm, I consider Israel as a friend, but I also wanted to insist on the necessity to reinforce the economic relationship between France and Israel, because I consider Israel as a key economic partner for France. We have strong political, historical, cultural ties, but to be honest, our bilateral economic relationship is really still too weak and we have developed. And we have a lot of fields, including the technological one, on which we should try to uh, make our best to improve the situation between our two countries. Regarding the recent problems of the sale of some Israeli products in some French markets, I want to be very clear, and I want to recall that any kind of boycott is forbidden in France. My administration would remain vigilant and call to order any economic actor that does not understand this rule. Rules have to be applied, and everybody has to commit and to abide by the rules. Last September in Israel, we also decided to create an economic task force between our two administrations to better understand the needs of our respective economies and how to address them, France and once in Israel. And now is the time for them to go to the second stage of their mission, to deliver on what they have been discussing. Discussion is one thing, decision is another thing. And decision is more important than discussion. What we both need now are tangible results with new Israeli investments in France and French investments in Israel. You know that with President Macron, we, were, we are implementing major reforms in the French economy. We will follow on the path of reforms to make France more attractive to foreign investments. On the 18th of June, I will present to the Council of Ministers an action plan for the transformation of the French business environment. This law will help France SMEs to grow, to export more, and to be stronger. Of the best French companies, and I want to warmly thank them for uh, their uh, presence this morning. French companies that work with Israel already are intent to do so. They are here to show you the excellence of French entrepreneurship seriousness and creativity. In a few minutes, of course, they will ask your questions. But first of all, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for being here. Welcome in Paris. Welcome in the Ministry of Economy and Finance. And you have the floor. Thank well, you. thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Minister. I recall our uh, meetings in Israel. I thank you for your uh, friendship, for hosting this breakfast, for bringing your colleagues uh, from French industry and from the French economic spheres, uh, and also for your clear statement about uh, opposing uh, the boycotting of Israeli products. I spoke to uh, Eric Schmidt of Google, uh, who I meet regularly, along with others who lead the great technological revolution that has taken the world. And I asked him, what about, uh, aren't you concerned with boycotting Israel? And he said, boycotting Israel? I'd have to boycott myself. This is where the cutting edge technology is taking place. I mean, there are only, you said, two centers. 
his words. This is, I don't know what he says in Paris, but this is what he said to me in Israel. He said, and in some areas, Israel is more important than Silicon Valley. In the places where I am this, which is cutting edge information technology, there we can't afford to do that. It's, not, it's inconceivable. Um, this is producing a tremendous change today in Israel um, for countries that actually had a policy, unlike France, actually had a policy, uh, even a standoffish attitude as opposed to uh, an official policy, uh, and they're coming to Israel. Example, Japan. Japan, Japanese country, uh, companies for years did not come to Israel. Uh, Mr. Abe came a few years ago at my invitation. I went to uh, Japan, he came now, just now. It's about three, four years, this whole business. The extent of Japanese investment in Israel grew by 20 times, 20 times. Not doubled, not tripled, 20 times in three years. So, and the same thing is happening in Israeli uh, investments. I don't know if on the same scale, but they're looking at uh, investments in Japan because once the psychological barrier, as opposed to a policy barrier, is crossed, the business does its own thing. And I believe that we, who have uh, a much freer relationship uh, over the years, uh, we can do a lot more, and I welcome your suggestion. Uh, and I think what we should be discussing is how to bring uh, very large number of uh, uh, business people to France and a very large number of business people uh, from France to Israel because they'll do the rest. Let me say about what is happening in Israel, which may be uh, of interest to you. I don't think there are many areas that are not going to be technologized. I think the idea of high tech and low tech is being washed away. Not everywhere, but in many, many areas. It's being washed away faster than people think. Uh, I think also that new markets are created. The traditional economic assumption that you have demand or supply that produces demand, demand that produces supply, this is all true. But the creation of innovation creates entirely new demand. Uh, Facebook, as I mentioned yesterday, is entirely new. It's not that uh, Mark Zuckerberg satisfied the demand that was there. Okay, he created a new demand. The same is true of uh, these other companies. And therefore, innovation, innovation is creep because it's creating entirely new industries and revolutionizing old industries. I want to give you three examples in Israel to understand the magnitude of this change and why I think our partnership is critical for both our countries. The greatest revolution is taking place because of the con connectivity, or rather the confluence of connectivity, artificial intelligence, and big data. I would reverse the order. Big data, AI, connectivity. And what this does is create businesses that are different, that didn't exist before. In Israel, we never had a car industry. Never. We tried. When I was a young uh, soldier, a young officer, I was given a car. The car was made of plexiglass. It was produced in Israel. I leaned on it one day and my elbow went right through it. <laughs> so much for our car industry, 50 years ago, okay? Useless, okay? We couldn't compete on scale, on, uh, on engines, on chassis, on tires. It was hopeless from the beginning, okay? Today we have a car industry, a huge car industry. 500 companies, one of which was sold to Intel for $15 billion uh, a few, uh, uh, well, last year. It produces autonomous uh, vehicle software. As cars become computers on wheels, we can compete. And as 85% of the value of the car becomes essentially software, we can compete, and we do compete. Another company that you're familiar with was uh, Waze, do you use Waze here? Okay, well, Waze, Waze was sold for a billion dollars to Google. I laughed. A billion dollars. It's worth it. It's worth a, a lot more. Money. But, so we have a car industry today because of AI, artificial uh, big data, and, uh, and uh, connectivity, which is uh, essentially what all these companies are. Okay, another example, 
cyber, the second largest uh, recipient of uh, cyber investments in the world, private cyber investment technology, security is Israel. Okay, U.S. is number one, Israel number two. Absolute terms, not uh, relative terms. So we receive uh, about 20% of total global cyber investment. We have uh, uh, tremendous growth. Why do we have that? Because we have sunk investment in uh, our, uh, effectively our NSA. We call it Unit A200 and related units. We have to spend that money anyway. So what we've encouraged is the formation of uh, startups in the field of cybersecurity. There is no business that is represented around this table that doesn't need cybersecurity and probably needs it more than you think today. You already need it today, although you may not be aware of it, but you certainly need it tomorrow. So Israel is a growing force in cybersecurity. Again, big data, AI, connectivity. Third example, uh, the last example that I gave you, is huge. I mean, I think transportation is huge. Everybody has to move. I think cybersecurity is huge. Everybody wants to have their bank accounts safe, their car safe, uh, everything else uh, that you do is dependent on cybersecurity as the IoT, the Internet of Things develops. The last example is health. This is bigger than everything because everybody wants to live longer and have uh, healthier lives. We are uh, just deciding in the government to take a database that we have, which is uh, the corporate 98% of the people. Each citizen has a card, which is a card. Uh, on this card, you have the last 20 years of the medical records of our citizens. And what we're doing now is taking this unique database, which is variegated, because people have come from 100 lands to us, so it's a very robust database. Uh, we're taking it, we're taking 100,000 people, subset of this group, giving them uh, swabs of saliva, so we have a genetic subset. And out of those, we're taking 2,000 people and testing them physiologically. So we now have a three-layer database from which we can now run, on which we can now run algorithms. Algorithms for preventive medicine, personalized medicine, new areas completely. Uh, this involves a lot of a government investment, which we have already done. It involves uh, privacy questions and so on, but we're determined to move there because we think we can revolutionize medicine. So here are three things that produce entirely new industries out of nowhere. We had nothing of this a few years ago, nothing, zero. But now it's growing and it creates uh, a new future uh, for us and for many others in the world. The reason I mention this is that this is what we have on the table now. But with your cooperation, look at any one of your industries, partner with Israelis, and together we can think of new things that you haven't thought about, that we haven't thought about. You have your own ideas. You have your own businesses which will change. Your businesses will change. I'll have to say this, they'll have to change in order to survive and thrive. We understand that we have to do the same constantly. We can do great things separately. We can do greater things together. That's why I welcome this opportunity to discuss this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you, Prime Minister. So I will open the floor.